everyone, and welcome back to College Conversations. This is the podcast about all things related to Christian higher education. Uh, this podcast is for prospective students and parents, uh, for people that are just interested in some of the trends related to Christian higher education. Uh, we try to do a lot of things in this podcast. Sometimes we talk about uh, specific things that you're going to face when you come to colleges, expectations. Sometimes uh, we talk about the theological significance of uh, taking on a biblical education. So lots of themes related to Christian higher education at large. Uh, I'm here today with a regular guest, uh, Miss Lori Kegge. Uh, Lori is the uh, Vice President of Marketing Enrollment at the Institute for GOD. My name is Jeff Sherrod. Uh, yeah, so we're always happy to be here with you guys to be able to hang out and to yep. talk. We're, we don't have Greg today with us. So you got some more today. We miss him. We do. We miss him. He's actually in Africa right now uh, with some other people. So we do a lot of work uh, as a school and an organization uh, internationally. So we have students that are even there um, mm-hmm. in Africa that take classes online. Yep. Um, but we have a lot of our students that are traveling. What what percentage of the students would you say are traveling this summer? <laughs> I think I can think of two that aren't. Okay, right. So... so- it's a, the grand majority of 90, students, yeah, are traveling internationally uh, this summer. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and so Greg's cool. actually headed to Africa to help set up some things for mm-hmm. uh, summer internship. Summer internship is a trip that students take either before they come here or right after they come here and kind of exposes them to some of the issues that uh, our students face in the developing world mm-hmm. uh, and then how to understand those things and address them through a biblical lens. So, yeah, we wish him the best. And and we've been praying for him, and uh, yeah, I miss him today. Uh, yeah, so in this podcast, what we're looking at, Lori, I think that um, one of the reasons you're a great guest to have on the show, it's one mm-hmm, of the reasons we have mm-hmm. you here, but also, like, I think even the nature of the show, we're addressing this to prospective students yeah. and their parents. I mean, this is an area of expertise for you. Um, you do a lot of tours. Uh, you talk to a lot of prospective students. So many. Uh, you have a lot of Zoom calls with students. So I think it's nice because I do think that you kind of have your pulse. You have a pulse on. Okay. What's the phrase? A pulse, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> a thumb on the pulse is what Chris is telling us. I think that sounds also that marginally correct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe you have a thumb on the pulse. Of finger on the pulse. Finger on the pulse. I don't know. Guys, anyway. there's there's some kind of beat that you have uh, <laughs> that uh, for what's happening in Christian education. Education, Christian higher education, not just what's happening there, but what prospective students are facing, what kind of questions they go after. Uh, you, to, in this podcast, we're talking about like a an effective college visit. Um, yeah. This is something that we pr- promote on our side. Like we, we, do. we definitely think that students, if they're able to, should be able to take. Uh, trips and visit the colleges that they want to go to. It yes. hugely helps. Yes. Um, but you've done a lot. You've hosted lots of these trips. So you kind of get a sense of what kind of questions students ask. Uh, what is a successful, what, you know, like by the time it's done, you're like, man, that was a good time. Or, yeah. you know, sometimes even if it's not successful on their end, we're going to, we're going to be like, Hey, you didn't ask this question, but you should have asked, you know, we're going to supply <laughs> right. sometimes the question that they should have asked. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we're, we're kind of getting in today. Um, like I said, you have a ton of experience with this. I don't know how many tours so you've the, done. Uh, the importance of campus visits. The importance of campus visits. I think also like what makes a good campus visit. Okay. What I, do you not want to leave campus without? Yeah. Something that's a like great that. way of saying it. Like what, what do you, what do you, by the time that you walk off the campus, what are all the things? that you should have done and asked about. All right. Uh, all so right. kind of setting up some kind of rubric. Yeah. You like I th- that? Yeah. And I think there are, it's good for everyone else. There's, there's various types of campus visits Yeah. Um, that we offer that most colleges offer, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, most colleges anymore have some sort of virtual tour available for you. So those are, you know, those are already readily accessible on their website. I would encourage you to watch them. There is a great resource in the college tour. They do, you know, 30 minute college episode. Yep. Um, I know my nieces were visiting colleges and my sister is just like, let's fly here. Let's fly there. I'm like, you know, you can watch the TV show first. Yeah. Like just like. So you're saying <laughs> even if they're going to go there in person, like just starting with sometimes like well, yeah, one, the virtual tour just, or. Just on the financial level. I'm like, just make sure you <laughs> like. The 30 minutes. Yeah, right. Then book the ticket. Um, but yeah, even for people visiting the Institute, I, I often tell them, um, just go watch the episode first with your family. It'll kind of give you a context for who we are. You know, then you're not like Because we've, we've been featured on the college yes, tour. Yes, so yeah. we're actually, uh, I'm pretty sure we're the only still Bible college 
yeah. on the college tour. So we are in uh, season 10, episode two, if you want to check us out. Um, but most colleges will have at least some aspect of a tour on their website. Yeah. The website itself should be guided uh, to help you understand the college. But walking on it, you know, it's meeting different. people, all those things are different. Yeah. Um, colleges often have like visit days or preview days. Right. Those are great, especially if you want to meet not just the people at the campus, but the other people looking at that college. Yeah. So I, I know I had experiences like that um, as a student. And I also know our current students made a very good friend, you know, just when they came to preview yeah. day. And they were able to anticipate all those marks of moving to campus with a with a friend who is feeling like they are. Um, but then there's also like sometimes the preview days don't work out for you or your schedule. Um, I've had people come just pass through and get a tour because they're like, we're passing through Nashville. Just stop for a yep. quick visit. That happened last week. I think you asked me how many tours I give. I don't know. I, feel I mean, how many this week? This week. I just came from one right now. Right. This second. So, yeah. I mean, I think in the last seven days, it's been like I'm at six. Yeah. And I'm like you a little bit like. share the with someone else, not me. With you. <laughs> <laughs> someone else, not me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so I, I think that you bring up a good point. So sometimes when we think about a college visit, we're really thinking like I'm getting in the car with my mom, and we're gonna go. Always with the mom. I mean, and that's the just dad. What's, yeah. It's sometimes we do see more dads than we used to. Yeah, it's true. Um, for a while, it was just the kid and the mom. Uh, but you know, get in the car, station wagon, as it were, right? And yep. uh, getting and, and visit the college. But I think that you bring up a good point. Like, there's a lot of different ways to tour the college, and mm -hmm. for those that are, I'm using like air quotes. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what would you say? Like, you're kind of bringing up the easiest one, which is lo lowest stakes. Go do a virtual tour, right? And or watch if it's on the college tour, mm -hmm. watch that. Visit the website. That's the easiest one. That's the easiest one. Another one we do is a Zoom call. Um, okay, right. Typically so this with, is with cheaper, a staff member. It's yep. still cheaper than, yep. you know, gas money, airplane, anything. Um, but I do, I personally enjoy getting to know a student and their families. On um, Zoom offers a platform. I can, uh, you know, you can at least see someone's face. Right, yeah. I can show you pictures. I can kind of do a tour via Zoom yep. um, for you live that addresses your specific questions, not just the one that's on TV. Um, so that's also a great first step. But it yeah, is, yeah, if you, I think everyone's still curious. And, but and like, you like, about what, the what percentage of students that you think come and do a tour, you've already done some kind of Zoom call with them? Um, most. Most. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Everyone, most people are kind of working through, I'm watching something, I'm going to do a Zoom and then Yeah. I'm anymore, do... they actually say like students want to be accepted first, then they'll come visit. It's, gotcha. whereas like, I know when I was going to college, it was like, well, let me visit everything and then decide where I want to go. Right. Um. You know, decide where I want to fill out my application, do the essay and all that. I think applications have become so kind of streamlined for people. Yeah. Or they're like, um, no offense, Gen Z, but sometimes they're like a little self-sabotage. So they're like, I probably won't get in. So I'm not going to like. I'm going to visit it. Yeah. I'll get my hopes up right. until I know that and I'm accepted. I, and you would say we've seen that same kind of trend. Like most we of the tours have. that we get are accepted students now. Most of the time. Sometimes uh, it's kind of one extreme or the other. I feel like they're accepted or they might be like a sophomore or junior who's just like ahead of the game. Right. Okay. Because uh, we open up our apps like the year before. Yeah. You know. So yeah, one or the two, one or two of those. Uh, I do recommend all those things. If I, if we have an applicant at the institute and I haven't done a Zoom call with them or they haven't met some member of our staff, I'm like, who knows? Right. You know, like I, I feel like that's a first level, you know, step of really yeah. investigating a situation. And they're fun. I've been on some of these Zoom calls too. Yeah. You like it to meet people. Sometimes you have like the dad who actually was there the whole time. And then, but he wasn't in the frame. Then he oh, like that's my sneaks favorite. <laughs> in. He's like, I have a question about. It actually happens often. <laughs> like the parent is yeah. out of frame. You just and see like a forehead. <laughs> um, do you have a? And it's it's always fun because they you can tell actually you made them feel more comfortable. So right, then right. They They're like come slowly in. coming in. Yeah. One of my favorites was this dad who, by the end of the Zoom call, was like going and gathering his daughter's artwork to like show me. <laughs> like, is he so just proud, proud of her? Parent. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I. So I Third doing... grade trophy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's cool. like if your schedule's busy or yeah. you're like, I don't know when I can get to 
such and such location or finances are tight or anything like that, you know, Zoom is like, because again, a campus video is is great. Yeah. Um, Zoom, but it allows you to talk to a person. Right. You have specific questions for your context. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that they've done the, they've watched the video or mm-hmm. done a virtual tour or they've done a Zoom call. Now there, there's like, now there's some expense. So they're going to like either yeah. get on a plane or get in a car and come visit campus. This mm-hmm. is risky for everybody, right? There's always some mm-hmm. nerves with this. You mentioned two types of visits. Sometimes it's a real organized visit, like a campus preview day mm-hmm. and a lot of people come, or it's kind of like come and do your own thing. What do you think are some of the pros and cons of of that one or the other? Yeah. So I brought up one pro already with the preview day is like you get to meet other people who are also interested in the school and you're kind of in the yeah. same s- stage that of the process. you might be entering in, in right. with. Okay, so yeah, sometimes that's good, people that's are like, pro. They end up being like, I had so much fun with you that day. Do you want to be roommates this year? And, you know, putting it on their little request form. And we've seen that happen, too. It's like, I met this person. Can we be roommates? That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think that is maybe even the premier benefit of coming on, like, a preview day. Right. Um, Another thing is you're coming alongside other families who who are just at the same stage of the process with you. Yeah. So usually if it's a day like that – you. Like for me as a planner, I'm going to make sure almost every one of our staff members is available that day. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to usually plan a preview day where our president's not, you right. know, he's traveling. And this or, is going to be a risk of like an individual visit. There might right. just be some staff there. Where, gone. yeah, then there's an individual individual visit. The pro is it's you get to book it on your time. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, students are like, well, this day works for me. I'm like, okay, well, that is a Saturday. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the campus will be kind of empty, you yeah. know, if that is fine with you. But at the same time, there's a pro to that if you just want to like see what a Saturday looks like on campus yeah. and like kind of have a no frills thing. We will do our best, at least on our campus, to like accommodate you, be as hospitable as we can within those constraints. But yeah, like you may not get to sit on a class if you just pick a random day on the on the calendar. Right. You know, our classes are done a week and a half from now. So yeah. <laughs> where you're going to kind of be limited on, I want to go to chapel or I want to go to a class. Mm-hmm. You, you might not be able to get each of those experiences um, if you are picking the date. But you may have a very individualized um, scenario in a different way. We yeah. have a student here this week on an individual visit. He's an athlete. He loves playing soccer. Mm-hmm. We're like... All right, pick up game on the field at six o'clock. Yeah. And, you know, everyone came out and played, and I heard that he was like, that was so fun. Like, yeah. he was like, I even fell, but everyone, like, helped me get up. And, you know, just like different aspects of that experience spoke to him. Right. Um, because we knew he loved soccer, and he's here this week. Yeah. Um, and we like soccer too. So, just, yeah. Another girl, thing, like, yeah. had, you know, extreme gluten-free uh allergies and we took her there's a gluten-free dairy or gluten-free uh bakery down the street her and her mom were like i mean that that bakery may have sealed the deal for that (laughs) family they were so happy yeah Uh, because they're like this is you know five minutes from campus and you thought about us enough to take us there i'm like yeah of course we did right um so the individualized support is you know, is great. I, I imagine too, like some students might think that you're getting a more realistic view if you come outside of a preview day. Like I can say, I don't know if that's true or not, but at least at like <laughs> where I went to college, um, if I walked into the student dining room and there was like the nicest lunch, I would be like, oh, oh, it's a preview day. You know, you kind of yeah, knew yeah. like this was a, this was. So tell them, you've told me this story a couple times, but I like it. Tell them about the fireplace room. Okay, yeah. College. So we had I went to uh the college I went to was in Chicago. And uh we I went on this tour initially, got on the station wagon with my mom, and then um I went to to visit this college. So we had a student that kind of brought us around, you know, and like here's the places, here's the thing. And like one of the rooms that I loved was they like it was a snowy day in Chicago, so it's already <laughs> had that kind of vibe going on. And so I walk in and it's like this room that has this central fireplace with n- nice wingback chairs and kind of like leather chairs in the corners with little reading nooks, and it's it's floor to ceiling books on on the walls and then a floor to ceiling window facing outward and it was snowing and I was like I want to live I want to live this in this room, room. Right so here. I ended up going to college here and I think that that might have been the room that stood out to me the most and it wasn't until I graduated that I realized I actually never went <laughs> into that room again never that was it no I never went what was because the there room? was I don't know if actually the books were fake <laughs> Even like looking back on it, or maybe it was like a law set. You know how some of those are like, or they were so old, but it wasn't part of the library. It was a reading room. Yeah. 
that I, yeah, it just wasn't in a building that had, I was never in this building. It was the administration building. So it was just, yeah, I just never. Might have been for their professors or something. I think it was for like uh, when they were doing like photo shoots or something like that. It, ah, that okay. was my sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's yeah. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. Yeah, like, but that's true. You probably have a nicer meal on preview day because you want them to see what you can do. Right, and you want to believe that the school's not showing you the fireplace room. Like this is where you're going to live. Actually, <laughs> you want to you want to hope it's right. It's being real. Yeah. Yeah, we're not trying to be fake We're by not. any means we're not <laughs> yeah but anyway so yeah maybe a mur- more realistic take but sometimes it may just be a logistical problem like yeah. you come in the summer we're a missions college i just said 95 percent of our people might be around the world right you're gonna be like well this is a dead campus no it's july yeah and they're in india uganda el salvador like so that's not you know real it's just yeah. a part of the calendar year that didn't line up exactly with what you're considering. So, so yeah, pros and cons both ways. Right. I, I think that if students are able to do a preview day, you should do that. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a way. But if you can't do that for whatever reason, still try to come right. before you come. Okay. So let's talk about, let's say they're here now, right? Okay. Uh, what would you say? Let's, let's see if we can do it. Like if students, we're trying to help students to get like, by the time you leave campus, don't leave without, what would you say? Number one, point number one. Can I just say, like, as they come to me, not like this is the most important. Sure. Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. N- so in no like, particular order. In no particular order. I would say you got to see the dorms. Okay. Like, that is where you are going to live. So, I mean, uh, even on my tours, I'm like, okay, this is the closet. This is how much room you're going to have. Those are, like, actually the questions that a lot of yeah. questions stem from. Um, but sometimes people don't actually show you those things. Right. Um, I know. I know the moms especially, they're like, show me the laundry. Where is it? You yeah. know, how often? But those are the practical concerns. Um, and I would, yeah, I would say sh- look at the yeah, dorms. Yeah, it's important. I think I think that's a good point. Like, it's important that students can envision, mm-hmm. like, where they will be when they're thinking about their college You're not living right? life in the classroom. You're going you're, to the yeah, classroom right. a couple times a week. But, like, you're sleeping in this space every night. Right. While you're hanging out there with your friends. What kind of... What kind of space is it? Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe it like for our our dorms here on campus, they're all houses. So they have morning prayer in them. They cook full meals in them. Mm. You know, it really is a communal living experience. That's, um, yeah, it's a house. It's not yeah. cinder block. There's not, you know, just a microwave. Like it's a full bodied experience. Um, we, but if we, also, we also, I think, try to... Not even try. We do. We show real rooms. Um, this is <laughs> Not another fake thing. Rooms. Well, yeah. this is another thing on the same college tour. We went into like a fake room, and they're like, "This is how the rooms are set up." And the, but no one lived in there. It was like a yeah. It was like sad. a I think it was a guest room. I don't know what it yeah, was. They probably had like it, an extra room. It looked awesome and super clean, <laughs> but it wasn't real. I, no one. There was no students that lived there. It was where they. Maybe and maybe it was practical. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Maybe like we don't want to disrupt students in their living quarters all the time, so we're gonna do a fake room to show you what it would be like if you did live there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a generous. Reason, it's also letting us know they have extra rooms. Good for but, you, college. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, for us, I like showing actual student rooms because yeah. I think that helps even students envision. Hey, yeah, I can decorate it. I can make it my flavor and my you know art. The girls' rooms, especially, are very cute. Yeah, they are. Um, but even the guys try, you know. There's a little they thing. do try. <laughs> I think. I don't um, actually know. But I, I think, think, I think that's, a, you know, another look. Like, how do the dorms work? What rules exist here? You know, how many people can be in and out? And mm-hmm. how does that work? I think it's just a practical concern. But if you don't see that while you're on campus, you're going to drive away from campus, be like, I wonder about right. storage. You and know, then like, it's like, it what should I bring? And who, what, yeah, there's a lot of questions that you're going to Sometimes up. it's funny because um, yourself and I will be on these Zoom calls and we're like, can we explain the program, maybe the majors? And it's like, do I get a parking pass? You know, it's <laughs> right. like sometimes those are the questions. Yeah, it's it's real. more like, where am I going to park? Yeah. Or I'm going to do my laundry. So, yeah, I mean, just make sure you check is it out. Is it a quarter laundry or is it free laundry? Yeah. These are the questions that we're getting, people. Okay, what about you? What's okay, so I, I think that it's important that there are – do you think that there's importance that there's times where the student is apart from the parent? But I do think that it's important that there's a moment when the student uh, and and the parent, the child and the parent, are able to have a meeting with someone on staff. 
um, like together. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that's important is that students and parents have very different concerns. So like sometimes <laughs> when I'm talking to the, the, the potential student or the, someone who's accepted, they're thinking about like, you know, where am I going to be? Like, what's this going to do for me down the road? And how is this going to work out? It's a lot of like vocation oriented type questions, yeah. maybe um, practical questions, or they have no questions at all. This is often what I find. And then the parent will be like, all right, what does it cost? And the kind of practical mm -hmm. questions that we brought up, sometimes it has worked out where that hasn't happened. And then that student will call us back and like, I went home, we had a great visit, but my mom has so many questions. Can and we do a Zoom call? Can yeah. we do a Zoom call? Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm like, so if you're there on campus already and you're together, I'd say try to find a, a time where both you guys can hear questions. And so both parent and the student can kind of talk to someone on staff and say, what about this and what's happening? I think it's also good for the student to hear like what their parent is concerned about. You know, yeah. like, oh, that is a good question. Go back to your that. point though, because you also said you think it's good when they, the student has time kind of just being a student. Well, so yeah, wh why do you think that or what? Well, because I, we want, again, students to envision what it's like to mm -hmm. be on campus and they're not going to be here with your dad or your mom, right. sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, and, and we love your mom and dad, but they're right. just not going to live with you here. So there actually has been times that we've had to tell parents like, hey, so they're going to be – They're going to go to class On now, their own they're gonna, for a ride. And they're yeah. like, I can't come. Like, it's not that you can't come. We're trying to give them like a more realistic experience and they can do that and have a little bit better social interaction mm -hmm. um, if their mom's not like – over their shoulder would be like, oh, who's this? Introduce me. Right. You know, and that's cute. And we like that moments. And we try to facilitate, at least for us, we mm -hmm. try to facilitate times where both these things happen. Right. But it is important that I think that the student has some time, some social time even, mm -hmm. to be able to hang out with students, see what's saying. You're going to get kind of like the real the real deal, the, 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 the scoop into what student yeah. life is like yeah. if your mom or your dad's not there with you. Right. Yeah. I agree. And that's why mom and dad sometimes were like, this is a session just for students. Yeah, right. Yeah. And we say that. Yeah. And it's like we try to, I think people mostly get it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what, uh, what else would you say? Um, I think a, a time to engage the Lord with our current students. I yep. think um, campuses have different kind of spiritual climates or even different spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I think questions students are asking them but may not know how to frame <laughs> verbally would be like, how comfortable am I going to feel in worship? Are we a place that raises our hands? Are yeah. we a place that prays out loud? Are we not? Is there pressure to do that? Is there not? Like, um, so I think instead of just asking a staff member, how do you worship? Like go engage in a worship experience yeah. with current students um, and see how you feel. Right. Um, See what it's like. See the comfort level that you feel. Or, um, yeah, I, I mean, I tell students looking at our school, I'm like, if you don't like to worship and pray, it's probably not school for you. Yeah. Our students are kind of a little addicted to that. But like, do you think they that like it's, it. um, and I think my concern here would be if someone's like, well, I prefer, um, you know, whatever kind of flavor of worship they prefer, mm -hmm. and then it becomes like real, like consumeristic. Yeah. yeah. What What do you do? You think that that's a concern? Yeah, I, I think that's not. Sorry. Yeah, I would. I would say that's a healthy concern. Yeah. You not. You don't necessarily just like want to shop because often the thing experience. that we like the best is just the thing we grew up with. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think I think noting. Uh, like again, what I'm, well, I think what I'm trying to say is like noting a spiritual climate, yeah. um, of a place and whether or not you, maybe it's, maybe it's not even the comfort level. Maybe it's, did you, you know, feel the presence of God right. in this moment? Yeah. Like college is a big decision. It's one you should make with the Lord yeah. and in prayer. And I think that campus experiences, particularly in Christian colleges, <laughs> Bible colleges should facilitate a moment like that. Yeah. And I think if we're doing our job right, that's not a manipulative moment to be like, and you should see the answer is us. It's a moment where you can seek the Lord right. and, um, and do that in a way that y you feel him. Um, I don't know if I'm I'm phrasing that. No, I think exactly I think that right, you're right. But... I think that one of the, and I'll maybe yeah. go into one of my points. Um, okay. One of the things that I wanted to say is that I don't think you should leave a campus visit without having unstructured time. Mm -hmm. But I think this actually relates uh, because yeah, we want chapel to be a time where we do sense God's presence, but we really want when you walk around with current students, 
especially maybe not like freshmen because, you know, they're learning and we're getting that. But like when you're working around with students that have been there for some years and if you're not getting like the word coming out of their mouth, if you don't hear this like attitude of um, a dependence on God and a, a clear demonstration that they're, they're, they're filling their mind with, mm-hmm. with God's word and what's coming out of them is God's yeah. word, yeah. then I think that that also gives us insight into the spiritual climate I agree. of the university too. Because I think that there's often many, you know, very spiritual professors and spiritual mm-hmm. life staff, but we want to make sure, I think that you should judge to see how much that translates That's true. into the life of the yeah, students. Yeah, and you really need both in that way. You, you do, need to right. see how, it's facilitate, how it is facilitated, mm-hmm. whether that's a classroom time or a chapel time, um, but also how when it's not a formal time, Yep. Um, does the spirituality continue? Right. Is the word coming out of them? Yeah, is the, the word coming mouth. out of them? And, and don't just like use uh, what can feel the easiest metrics. Like I like how these people dress and I like how they use very high Christian language. You know, <laughs> it's like sometimes we get a little messed up with yeah. this. Like Jesus wasn't, Jesus was a very spiritual person, mm-hmm. although he didn't necessarily hold on to the signs of traditional yeah. spirituality. Mm-hmm. So it's important that, you know, we have our own sense of discernment that I think that, and maybe this is a tall task for um, for prospective students, but I would encourage students to pray mm-hmm. before they go and ask God to help them to discern. Like, man, this is a big deal. You want to feel like by the time you're going to Christian college, this is going to grow you in your faith, not take away. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I've, I've talked to a lot of people, I've gone to a lot of different col- Christian colleges and Something I've noted in all of them is that there's a tendency for some students to like go for it and do real well, but there's a lot of students that by the time they graduate, they're real jaded. Um, And if you see a lot of students that are real jaded, you know, I would pay attention to that and it might give you some insight and be like, why is that happening? Why are they like real negative about this experience or negative about ministry or negative about whatever else? If if you hear a lot of negativity, I would, that's something I would pay attention to. Yeah, one of the, I've, one of the comp- one of my favorite compliments I've heard from a visitor to campus, and this wasn't a student visitor; it was like a evaluator when they <laughs> came f- via our accreditation process. Um, but they also sat in on our chapel, and one of the visitors said, "I've never seen so many um, heads up in a chapel." Mm, yeah, and I was like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "They weren't looking at their phones, you know. They weren't slouched in their chairs. Yeah, like I've never seen so many present students. Yeah, at a chapel." And I was like, "I." Love that. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, a, that's that makes great. me so happy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like paying attention even Paying attention to, to that kind things. of stuff, yeah. And at least going in, even if you're like, I'm just learning the Lord, I don't know if I can discern all that, then ask God to help you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he will. He'll, he'll give you some insight into what you're doing. It's like you really want this time to to maximize your visit, which is short. People say, mm-hmm. God, give me some insight in what's happening. And we're, we're hoping that wherever you go, especially if it's like, you know, a, a Bible college that's, you know, really teaching God's word, that you would sense God's spirit. Uh, yeah, in that place. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, what else would you say? Don't leave campus un- unless you. I'm, I'm forgetting the other one I said earlier. We one one of the things something. that you were saying is like, well, obviously you have to visit a class. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think so. We kind of talk about spiritual climate. Some of that can come in a classroom. It can come in chapel. I do think it's it's a good experience, especially if you're going to a Bible college. It's right. like, ugh, like like be, uh, get the experience. Yeah. It, College classrooms are very different from high school classrooms. I know for us, uh, we practice a flipped classroom model. Mm -hmm. That takes some time to get used to. That means our students are not, or our teachers are not just lecturing. It's a very interactive experience. Um, But yeah, like I think you, in visiting a class, you're getting to see also another rubric would be the interaction between staff and students or between faculty and students. And I think that can tell you a lot. Right. Is, Is your one, like, does faculty good at, do a good job yeah. in teaching? Mm-hmm. <laughs> are they, you know, handling the text well? Are they insightful? Is it a good time in class? Yeah, did you, you, wanna, you don't want to go to a boring class. Yeah, like, was it was super boring. Yeah. yeah that's good. Um, but also, how, how do the students act in class? Can right. help you even know, okay, what's expected? Yeah. Um, what's expected at our school is like a lot of interaction. We want you guys to feel free. We want you to be honest. Yeah. We want there to be uh, dialogical components. And I think sitting in that and kind of observing the interaction, again, between staff and students or faculty and students um, is very helpful for you to consider continue to make that consideration. How would I fit? Right. And what would be expected? Yeah, I think that's good. I think that, yeah. you know, traditionally when we were probably doing 
mm-hmm. college visits. That's what we we would go. We would sit on as many classes as maybe we could, and that was more or less the visit. And go yeah. to like a dining hall. Yeah. And then, but I think more and more what we're seeing now is that students that is not at the top of their list, which I think is interesting. <laughs> right. Like they're going to college, but it's like, well, I want to make sure I visit the dorm. What are the and do clubs and, and what are the yeah, friends? All that. And, like, and I'm like, the well, there's different things. Class. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, 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 probably should go to that too. You definitely should. Um, it's like, you know, we one of our slogans at the mm-hmm. institute is that we're more than a school, mm-hmm. but that we're also a school. And I, we've had to like amend that to be like, yeah, we're we're de- we're doing more than education, right? More than what's happening in the classroom. There's there is a lot that's happening here. It's we're, a Christian community. This is a, a discipleship Christian, model. Exactly, like yeah. there is a lot to this that is not solely the classroom. But, but we're still but, a classroom. Yeah, but there's the, and we're still and teaching God's word, and, and it's, it's a, serious. And it's a super important part of the thing. And just like we talked about spirituality, I don't think it's bad questions to put students on the spot. Like if you're a visiting student or parent, just come up to a student after class, like, what kind of things have you been learning in this mm-hmm. class? What stood out to you? Right. You know, like in... Yeah, they're like, oh, I don't know. I can't remember anything. This is a big decision in your life. It's a it's big decision. a like, big financial decision. Yeah. It's you're moving from everything you've ever known. Like, have the guts. Ask some questions. Right. Um, the more you do that, the more you'll get out of a visit. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that and we're talking about even like you mentioned the financial. That might be the last thing I would say is yeah. is um, don't leave don't leave a campus without figuring out cost. Uh, <laughs> like that would be, we actually have a student that's here, like you mentioned right now mm-hmm. on a college visit. He was telling me yesterday, he's like, I went on a preview to another college in the Pacific Northwest. And it was like a preview, kind of a two day preview event. Uh, and he was like, and the last session of the last day, they're like, all right, we're going to talk about finances. Um, and he was like, you know, by being on this visit, you get a $4,000 scholarship. So everyone's like, woohoo. And then he went into the meeting and found out that after scholarships, tuition was $60,000 a year after scholarships. Gasp. And that's not a rumor board. That was tuition. Oh my goodness. So he was like, well, I wish they would have told me that on day one. But at least nothing else they said it. <laughs> at least right? they said yeah, it. At least they yeah. said it. So that's nice. And I think that that's important. So it doesn't – this is something we have to kind of – you have to – we try to work with students that sometimes understand scholarship literacy. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a way of saying it because there can be one school that can give you $10,000 of scholarship, but if the school is $100,000 a year, this is still- Which is happening these this days. This is happening, right? But they're like, but I got 10000 But if you get a $10,000 scholarship at another school or $8,000 in another school, but the tuition is $20,000 a year, this is very different. Right. So the kind of questions that I think you should ask is like, what does the average student pay out of pocket? Right. Like that's an appropriate question to ask. and. How much debt do they carry? How much you know, debt after, do they carry? Yeah, after graduation. Like exactly right. Uh, what is the average aid package uh, for students? What work options are available? What on work campus? options are available? Like really trying to come up with a plan for how you're going to graduate with either hopefully no debt or reasonable amount of debt. Mm-hmm. Like at our college, we've made a commitment since we started that we don't want students to graduate with debt, which that means that it takes a lot of financial literacy talks mm-hmm. um, from both the really student and the parent. Right. They both have to understand like what scholarships look like and how it works and, um, you know, like what is, how does their work supplement all this? And if they are working, what does that mean for their college studies? You know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of questions yeah. that need to go on, but make sure you're doing like the hard work of really figuring that out. You're probably not, if you're a prospective student, you're not going to be able to say, they're not, the, they're not going to be able to give you the exact dollar amount. Right. But you can still push them for, well, what is average? Yeah, you what's know, average? Uh, a scholarship packet. What's mm-hmm. the average student pay mm-hmm. out of pocket? At least it's going to give you a better idea of, of what this of what this is looking like. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I would say like if you're going to make that investment to go and visit a campus, like give it all you've got. Don't, oh, that's a Don't kind of yeah. be like a, a passive participant. You yeah, know? I like that. Ask the questions. Do the things. Um, it's, it's especially fun when people have done their research even before they come. And then they're kind of like – is real li- does real life match what is being broadcast? Oh, so you yeah. Know, on the like, website do some or fact on social media. Yeah. You're like, you've already read it, but you're going like, to ask them anyway and see if their answers line up. <laughs> yeah. I like that. People I like that. do that to us. Like, sometimes they read our stuff. They're like, zero, uh, zero alumni have debt. They're like, is this real? Is this yeah. place real? Right. Or they're like, uh, you know, you have this many Bible classes and this much time. Is this real? Yeah. Well, it obviously is, but ask. Right. Yeah, like ask and ask the variety of people. Yeah. Um, who you find and who you meet. And um, that really is, that's the, that's the benefit of campus. Yeah. Is your, or campus visits. You're, you're doing that fact-finding mission. Yeah. You're 
our like what we consider a successful campus visit is when a student knows what's next. That doesn't mean yeah, they've chosen us. Yeah, that's a good us. way of saying it, right. Like that doesn't mean they've chosen us. Sometimes we've had um, people come, they loved us online. They got here in person and they were like, this is a lot. These are a lot of people talking to me. I'm not sure I can like, <laughs> I was do wanting all to this. be a number and not Yeah, a, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, you yeah, know, like you're... must not be the, the place for you. Right. But like I counter that as a success because I'm exactly like, right, that yeah. was so much cheaper, so much faster than you enrolling here. Yeah. Finding out a month in, two months in, I don't think this is the place. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah, go for it now. Yeah. It is a big decision. Um, but yeah, the goal at the end is for you to know, to feel confident in the Lord on That's your next right, steps, yeah. whether that is the campus you're visiting or not. Yeah. And it's not, I think you're saying it right. It's, it's not about feeling comfortable with your next step. It's about feeling confident in the Lord. Right. Uh, we're not just trying to be like, this would be the easiest place. <laughs> Like that's not that's not a good. I wonder how you can Jesus would even off. handle anyone saying that. Yeah, <laughs> Lord, I want to follow you and give me the easiest path. Yeah, yeah, we don't get that instead. So yeah, instead, I think it's good. Make the most of your college visit. Ask the hard questions. Ask a lot of people. You know, like pray so you can be extroverted and you can show some kind of boldness. Right. You know, even right. when you're there. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I know that a lot of we're getting a lot of. Um, uh, Perspective students visiting right now. This is mm-hmm. kind of a spring is very much a, yeah. a season of people taking these tours. So yeah, I hope you guys were able to kind of work through some of this rubric as you guys are doing uh, tours this spring. I do encourage you uh, to visit the school mm-hmm. uh, before you guys go there. I think it will make a big difference in you guys making an informed decision about where you're going. Uh, you know, reach out, schedule it, see what, uh, see how you can be accommodated. Whether that's in a student preview day. Um, or a one-off kind of visit. Until then, uh, as always, we encourage you guys, and we love it when you do, when you like and subscribe to our channel, when you share with other people. It really means the world to us. See you guys next time. That's right. See you guys.